Welcome to The Buzz at SJMA, our ongoing podcast series featuring artists from our permanent collection. This insider commentary features artists, gallerists, curators, and friends to give you a glimpse into each artist's creative process. You can subscribe at the iTunes Store or YouTube to make sure you always have the latest installments. Jim Campbell combines his background in electrical engineering and filmmaking to create works of art that make reference to scientific theories, quantum physics, and the complexities of both human and electronic memory. His works typically require viewers to linger expectantly as images appear and a narrative unfolds. Home Movies 300-3 consists of a grid-like curtain of white LEDs. Each light flickers against the wall, projecting part of a moving image. When viewed from a distance, the light movements become recognizable as human figures moving about and talking. The film footage comes from random home movies that Campbell purchased on eBay. For Campbell, transforming these films from intimate home movies to abstract, pixelated images reveals a universal human experience. Jim Campbell shared his thoughts with us in his studio in Potrero Hill in San Francisco. I've created a number of works in the past that have hints at Heisenberg, who was a physicist a little less than 100 years ago, I guess more like the 30s, 20s, who came up with this, what's called the uncertainty principle. And basically what it says is that, kind of in a very simple way, which is really the only way that I understand it, um, that if you try to observe something, if you shine light on something to observe it, you'll affect it. And I did a number of works where just the viewer's presence in a, in a place affect what it is that they're looking at, often in a way such that they can't see it anymore, kind of go to, going to the point of obscuring. And that's kind of what Heisenberg was about. The more that you try to see something, the more information you try to get from something, the less you get. So with, with the home movie works, the low-resolution um, home movie works, I was interested in having the display device obscuring the image so that you're actually looking through the display device to try to see the image. So it kind of hints back to some of those other works that kind of inherently have this relationship between observation and what it is you're observing. And in this case, the obscuring of what you're trying to see. One of the things that the kind of the way that I'm displaying them in the low resolution and they're kind of doubly obscured. They're obscured because I'm showing them in low resolution and they're obscured because you're, you're looking through the, the, as I said before, the display device. Um, but by obscuring them that much, the, the thought was, and whether it's successful or not is another question, but the thought was that they become universal. They could be your home movies. When I first started making these low-resolution LED works, I wanted to build my own display devices that were inherently low-resolution. The, the other direction that I could have gone would have been to take regular video and kind of contrive it to be low-resolution. And instead of doing that, I chose to build a display device that was inherently low-resolution to kind of avoid the contrivance, um, which in retrospect, I'm glad I did because it's a completely different experience looking at a hundred light bulbs creating an image than it is looking at a video that's kind of simulated to look like it's trying to be a hundred light bulbs creating an image. I think it's a much more profound experience to look at the, these low resolution display devices than it is to look at um, a video trying to do the same thing. For home movies, basically I wanted to keep the structure as simple as it could possibly be. And at the same time, I wanted it to be what it is, which is that each pixel is defined by a little square and it's facing the wall. So the goal was to have as little mass supporting these pixels as possible. So I just chose to do the wires that are sending the power and the video image signal to each pixel, they have two functions. They function to send the information to each of the boards, but they also function to support the structure in this kind of fabric, this kind of weaving. 
I don't see emotional impact as something that I usually think about when I'm creating a work. It's either there or not. And with my work, for whatever reason, whether it's there or not usually has to do with the success of the work. I certainly start often from kind of a conceptual direction, I guess I would say. And then if there's any, if you want to call it emotional content at the end, then it's uh, usually more successful. It's usually, I think, the combination of the, the two that makes the most successful works for me. I'll start with um, something. <laughs> Paul D. Marinus' voice, if you know him. Oh. <laughs> nice. That is an alarm. Oh, 